Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. So today we got a, we got an interesting one. We got a really cool article. It says seller incentives aren't cutting it as home buyers struggle with affordability. So you know, a lot of homes are going up for sale now. You know, across the country, mm -hmm. and even though some people are giving incentives, some, maybe some buy downs or right. you know, concessions for rate, you know, repairs or just different things but it's still not helping enough for the affordability aspect. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Okay. Okay, so seller incentives, you know, they're becoming more and more common, but it's just not cutting the mustard, according to this article. Right. So let's read it, we'll talk about it. And in the meantime, if you really like these kind of uh, videos, it really, really helps us, and it definitely motivates us to make more videos, we enjoy it a lot. So if you hit that subscribe button, it's greatly appreciated, and let's get started. All right. All right, Bill, why don't you read? So, seller concessions are popping up in home listings across the country, but the offerings alone aren't enough to lure in cash-strapped buyers. More than three quarters of agents surveyed by Bright MLS said their buyers stopped or paused their home search in the past six months with 67% citing elevated mortgage rates as their top reason for exiting the market. All right, let's talk about that. Okay. So basically rates have gone up. They're back in the sevens, right? Yep. Okay. Yep, so, and I mean different, now remember, rates are gonna be different in different regions. Well, in know? general. Yeah, so like there's some people that I've heard in other states, you know, other agents that I know and, and talk to, some of their customers are getting, um, you know, six and three quarters. So it just depends. But you're talking about a quarter percent. I didn't yeah. know. I thought rates were pretty much standardized across the country. It just depends on where you're at. Okay. So I didn't know that. That's something I just learned. Okay. So um, let's continue. So basically it's true, right? Yeah. If, yeah. If, if interest rates are going up, I still think the magic number to make the home purchases go crazy and the market really on fire is five percent yeah if we get i mean honestly if we even start approaching six i think you're going to see a massive influx again of uh buyers and and probably sellers too because then people will be like okay my house will sell they have somewhere to go because it's kind of cyclical goes together you know yeah all right where'd you leave off all righty so uh, another 56% said the lack of available homes in their price range was a reason for bowing out and some 53% said they weren't able to compete with cash offers. All right, so, hey, a lot of people, there's still a lot of cash offers coming in because especially here in Florida, let's talk about this for a second. Yeah. You know, I know some cash people are, that could get financing, but they don't want to pay the crazy home insurance. They'd rather self-insure, and to do that, right. they have, have to, be to be no mortgage. No mortgage, a cash right. buyer. And these aren't just investors, right? So we have people who have been in their homes for a significant amount of time. They've sold them. They're either, you know, they're downsizing or relocating, and they're taking the cash that they've built up in equity, and they're purchasing a home here. So it's just, there's this, uh, I've talked to a lot of people, they seem to, when you hear cash buyer, they're automatically assuming that that's an investor and it's not necessarily the case. I mean, look at the baby boomers are coming, they're sitting on a ton of wealth when they sell their house that they've been in for 25, 30 plus years. Yeah. There's no mortgage on it and the equity gains over 30 years is huge. So you're competing, yes, you are competing with some investors when it comes to cash, but you're also competing with people who have been in their homes for a very, very long time. That's true. So, okay, so I, I agree with that. A lot of people are, are holding back on that. The snapshot underscores the inability for buyers to keep up with current market conditions. Even some sellers are resorting back to concessions. You're seeing more concessions. Yeah, so, which is more normal, mm -hmm. right? So the article's addressing concessions to make up for you know, the, the higher interest rates, et cetera, and the, the, the unaffordability in the home. But concessions are just kind of part of the, the real estate transaction for the most part. You know, you might need to 
and get a few things fixed. Like for instance, you just did a few inspections today where there were a few issues. Right. And we don't know necessarily what their real estate professional is gonna do, but for the most part, they're probably gonna negotiate either the repair as part of the deal or some sort of a seller concession in the way of a contribution and monetary wise. Yeah, absolutely. And that can be structured in a lot of different ways, whether it's a rate buy down um, or just repairing it, depending on what the situation calls for. At least a third of all sales transactions in January included a concession, according to the study, with, with withdrew from responses of 852 real estate agents in the mid-Atlantic region. region. Yet most buyers remain on the fence and a trend some, upper, some experts say may bleed into the spring. Let's talk about that. Okay, so now we're in spring, getting into spring. Yep. You know, this is when real estate market heats up, especially yep. in the northern states and mm -hmm. everything. Um, it's getting busy here. Yep, absolutely. Because, you know, what you do is you over here in Florida, you have all the snowbirds, everybody that comes down, and then they're like, hey, let's go buy a home or something, you know? Yeah. So what do you think of that? Do you think it's going to slow down the spring buying season? I think a lot of things are going to slow down the spring buying season. But when, when we say slow down, you know, going from a scalding red hot boil pace to a more normalized pace feels like the brakes just got slammed on. You know, we went from like over 6 million transactions nationwide and then we came halting down to just over 4 million transaction nationwide. Um, so that feels like the brakes got slammed on because that six plus million was more than we've ever done in the history of keeping track of <laughs> yeah, real estate. Yeah, things went crazy. It was, it was wild. So it feels like a lot of slowdown. So yes, we're still going to sell homes. You know, like I said, we sold over 4 million last year and we're still going to sell homes this year despite everything because people still need to move. People need to relocate people, downsize, upsize, things of that nature. All right. Even with more concessions in the markets, sellers still have the upper hand because inventory remains low. Yes. Bright MLS chief economist Lisa, I won't even butcher her last name, told Yahoo Finance sellers are willing to offer cash for repairs and some home inspection items. But so far, according to the survey, we have not seen a lot of sellers coming to the table with offers to buy down. You know, I guess oh, for, they're talking about rate buy downs. Yeah. So, so, all right. Let's talk about inventory. Okay. All right. I haven't looked at it. I don't follow it. You're the realtor. What's inventory doing? I, you know, from what I see, it's going up, especially with the condos. Well, yeah, condos is a whole different. There's, so those are kind of two different markets per se, mm -hmm. because you got a condo market and a like a residential single family home market. Um, yes, but as a combined total, inventory is going up because things are staying on the market longer. There's a couple of reasons for that, at least in our area. I can't, you know, there's various reasons all over the country, but in our area specifically, you know, we've got we've gone from things that are like six, seven, eight, nine days on market to trending upwards of, you know, 28, 33, 40 days on market, um, you know, before you get under contract. And then you still have to go through the contract process. Right. Um, so, so basically it's you're getting saying, normal, but that's normal. So you're saying the reason why it looks like inventory is blowing up is just because things are staying on the market longer. Right, but that does contribute to, you know, inventory growth. You know, we here in this general area, we're building a lot, you know, out on the east side of the county. Mm -hmm. So that's helping our inventory issues. Um, but then there's other things that are hurting our inventory issues as well. So, you know, it's, it's a give and take. We have traditionally been in a seller's market for quite some time. Even prior to COVID, we were still in a seller's market when I look back at the data for the last decade. So being in a balanced market, it's been a long time since we've had one of those. Yeah, all right. All right, why don't you continue? Nearly two in five sellers offered credit necessary for repairs revealed at home inspections, according to Bright MLS. The second most popular concession reported among listing agents was closing cost assistance. 
with 30% of offerings uh, that help. Other popular incentives included rent back from a buyer and home warranty assistance. So rent back, yeah, you've done a couple of those. I've least. done a couple of those, yeah, they're called, we call them lease backs here um, in our state. So what happens is you go through with the transaction, the seller can't move right away. They need, they need uh, to stay in the home. Mm -hmm. So they transition from the owner of the home to a tenant in the home. And that's done as part of the entire real estate transaction. Yeah, and the home warranty part of it is they have a third party company that comes in yep. after the home inspection and say, okay, we'll warranty this stuff and it'll cost X amount of dollars. Right. And the seller is paying for it. Right. And it could be negotiated. The seller could pay for it. And the buyers have the option to pay for it themselves as well if they just want it as part of the real estate transaction. All right. They don't have to, it's not something that's only, you know, afforded to the seller to offer to the buyers. All right, so that's a pretty good article yeah. so far. Yeah. All right, what else does it say? But those incentives may be missing the mark during a time when affordability is so fragile uh, for many buyers. Less than 4% of home sellers offered to buy down mortgage rates, the heaviest burden for most buyers. Meanwhile, just 9% of sellers lowered their home price after a low appraisal. So okay. that, <laughs> that's an interesting one. So. Nine, only 9% nine of people, so the appraisal came in lower than what they're selling it for, and and they're basically 91% are saying, and hey, nope. you know what? This is the money I want, and that's it? Yep. <laughs> All right, I mean. Strong move. So, that can be eaten up, what we call it like, for the ease of explanation, it's negative equity. You're eating up the negative equity with your down payment. So for instance, if you have to, if you have to qualify for your home loan, you're doing an 80-20 loan, 20% down, but you're putting 30% down. So you have some money there to buy the negative equity up and still qualify for your loan because you only needed to put 20% down to qualify, but the, the appraisal came in low, the seller, is not willing to budge on the money that they want and you're choosing to buy up the negative equity all right it it's an what, option it's an option what else uh, well it goes on to say both obviously can impact monthly payment which is buy downs are expensive right and buy downs don't do in the long haul they can do a lot so that's where you have to sit with your mortgage professional and your realtor and really kind of look at what the trends are and then really just break it down to numbers because when you do a buy down it doesn't make sense if you're planning on moving or think there's even an inkling of you moving within the in, next few years that's for a long term yeah so you have to see how many years you need to stay in your home to make the buy down worthwhile because if you sell prior to let's say it's seven years Mm -hmm. and you sell, you just lost money because the buy down didn't do anything for you because you have to put that money up front to buy the rate down. Right. So you don't get your money, you don't get but a return. They, I think what they're saying is the seller should put that money down. Right, but we're not in that market yet. Right. So that's the problem. We're not in the market for that yet because we're still in a seller's market. What else are they saying, Bill? So, you know, the article goes on to say, buyers are sacrificing maybe the location that they want to be in to obtain the affordability range that they are mm -hmm. and you know they're also according to the article buyers are even starting to sacrifice on basics like space meaning square footage of the house yeah i've seen that you know and that i see that a lot yeah there you know and to be honest with you you know you could have a three thousand square foot house that's not laid out very well and it feels very small and compact compared to maybe a 2,000 or 2,500 square foot house with a fantastic layout and the property feels very, very big. Yeah. So, um, the most affordable homes, those priced under 300,000 remain elusive while the few available on the market are less likely to offer concessions. Let's talk about that. Okay. Okay. That's true. Look at in our areas, the house prices, you know, I was doing million dollar houses, 
and you know inspections mm -hmm. and now i'm doing less and less of those but i'm doing the 300,000 320,000 right the dollar house or 249 you know that price range mm -hmm. and i'm telling you when i find problems they're like nope <laughs> It's it's the way it is, you know. Other than the, if it's a four point, which is an insurance issue, and they right, can't get insurance. Right, you have to get that fixed for the most part. But they're like, and I talk to these buyers afterwards. It's like, yeah, the sellers are like, hey, if you don't want it, there's 50 other people behind you. Right. Well, it's the truth. It is. So it's that, why it puts them in a position of power still. But that's the people of power. The people that are losing power. Are, are people with the million dollar houses and especially maybe even the condos, the right. luxury condos. Mm -hmm. All right, according to Bright MLS, sellers of homes priced under 300 were the least likely to offer concessions. Just 24% offered buyers some sort of concession in 2023. By contrast, sellers of mid-priced homes were more likely to offer concessions last year. Some 30% of homes priced between $300,000 and $500,000 had a seller offer a concession. Meanwhile, 27% of sellers of homes priced between $500,000 and $799,000 offered some type of perks to close a deal. What do you think? There's more wiggle room in those houses. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking too. Yeah. That, you know, you've got usually you've got a little bit more wiggle room in those properties to offer concessions. The the margins are bigger. Mm -hmm. So, to offer a five hundred thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollar concession, it's it doesn't affect the bottom line as much, and it doesn't or it doesn't feel like it affects the bottom line. At the end of the day, two thousand dollars or two thousand dollars. There's a dolphin, dolphin right here. Hopefully, you guys can see. Let's see where he is. No, I guess he decided that he saw us and he's like, I don't want to be on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it's just repeating the same thing where it says, you know, rate buy downs remain the least common concession out there. Some sellers are bringing it to the table to close the deal. That's pretty rare. Um, sometimes they get a little confusing, but at the end of the day, hey, you're my height now. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day it's an option to get your deal closed but i think because a lot of times the rate buy downs are larger numbers and the majority of sales right now are in those three four hundred thousand dollar price ranges where the margins aren't as big sometimes so the seller can't afford to do the rate buy down so so, Bill, do you think we'll see more concessions and buy downs? I don't think we're going to see them anytime soon. The article does address it, but just in what what I'm seeing, hearing, talking, networking, I just don't see buy downs from like the resale side of things. the The builders are still doing some significant incentives. If you have builders in your area that are offering incentives, they do buy downs. They're doing. Uh, bonuses they just structured a different word but mm -hmm. at the end of the day it's still money back to you um you know while they last so we'll see how that goes yeah i i just think that concessions are going to be more popular for well, for condos than houses because the condos are in so much trouble especially here in florida right i just think it's going to be i think it's going to be more and more um condos with concessions yeah and i mean Condos is just a whole different animal in and of itself. You know, yeah. it, it attracts a different kind of a buyer. You know, so it's just, I think that's just an entirely different animal um, in and to of itself there. So we'll see how things go. But here's what the article say. Uh, with inventory of previously owned homes still in short supply, more and more buyers have been turning to new homes in search of financing perks. Kind of like what I just said. You know, we're getting to the new home stuff. That's really what uh, what's going to happen if you want incentives. If you've got them, that's the hard part. Like, not everybody's building everywhere. Yeah, I mean, builders are definitely giving incentives. Yeah, and so if you look at like Pinellas County here, where we're at, and Tarpon Springs, there's only a a few. And I mean, when I say a handful of building going on, I'm talking there might be 20 new construction homes. Period. Yeah. You know. But then you go out to the east side and they're tearing out 
land and clearing structures for 38,000 new houses in just one subdivision, and they're doing 10 or 15 of those. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Anything else on that article? Yeah, so... So it's, here's how I thought this was interesting. Overall, the average size of a new home inched down from 2,479 square feet in 22 to 2,411 in 2023. So they're making them smaller to be more affordable. Yep. Yeah, and I've noticed that too with the builders even. Um, out on the east side, they had a builder that was slated to build the smallest house was 3,500 square feet mm -hmm. and up. And they actually pushed that project back and flipped it over. And they started building more what they call a price point home. Uh, but they're building more homes in the high threes, high threes to high fours. Uh, I know. Because people don't realize, I, like I did an inspection yesterday for a 5,000 square foot house. You, it's a lot of house. You. And I call that a 10,000 step <laughs> house. <laughs> because I go by how many steps I got to just look. Inspect it. That's an easy 10,000 steps right. to do that house, you know? But I don't know, Bill. I just I just think that things are going to change and there'll be more concessions and I think they'll become more popular. Yeah. You're going to, as we get into a market where we're closer to a balanced market for the buyer's side, you know, where it's an equal buyer seller you know, push pull, mm -hmm. that's when you're going to see in incentives and more buy downs, more aggressive incentives and buy downs. But you also have the converse to this where a properly priced home, where it's not outlandishly priced, because sometimes people think that it's more important to price your house super high and go, oh, I'm going to offer a slash of a deal. And that's what you see a lot. Yeah, you know, where a house is really only worth 450, but hey, I already know I'm gonna have to knock money off. It'll make people feel warm and fuzzy. So, I'll so put it at 550, and uh, I'm gonna take a hundred thousand dollars off. Right, and then, but all that does is make most people think, what's wrong with that house number one? Yeah, and because I would, and that was even before I was in real estate, and it sits on the market, and you get no eyeballs because buyers are savvy, just like sellers. They know what properties are worth yeah. between the out, out facing, you know, portals to everybody looking everything up because it's all public information, at least here, you know, in, in our state. And I know different states have different rules, but it's very easy to figure out what a property is worth. Yeah, absolutely. So to, that strategy is time and time again, it does not work. It's just, it's, it works in retail sales, not in residential. Yeah. You know, it's great for uh, the t-shirts, but not for, you know, selling a house. Anyways, that's today's video. We have a freaking lawnmower coming here. So do me a favor, consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel and it's greatly appreciated. And we will talk to you in the next one. Sounds good. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Right, bye.